All right, guys, we are back with another example of Euler's equation. This time we're going to look at the complex root case. So this is the different equation that we are given. And again, first off, you have to recognize that it is indeed an Euler's equation. And we can do that by recognizing that we have a t squared with the y double prime, then a t, the y prime, and then the nothing in front of the y. Uh, so it is in the form, the general form of the Euler's equation. So what we do is we assume y is of the form of t to the r, where r is the roots that we are looking for. Um, so if you watched the previous video, we can go straight into the characteristic equation that we derived. So we take this coefficient right here and then multiply it by an r minus 1 times r, and then this coefficient in front of the t, and then, whoops, that's an ugly looking 3, um, and then multiply it by an r, and then plus a 5 equals zero. So let's go ahead and write this out. So we get, uh, okay, so we get 2r squared plus r plus 5 is equal to zero. Does this factor? Probably not. Um, so let's do, so r1, r2 is equal to negative b, so negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 4 times 2 times 5 all over 2 times 2. Okay, let's see what we get here. So negative 1 fourth plus or minus, we have 1 minus 40. So square root of negative 39 all over 4. Okay, so these are our roots, but we notice that we have a square root of a negative. So that gives us complex numbers. We have a real portion, and we have a complex portion. Um, so let's write this as negative 1 fourth plus or minus the square root of 39 over 4 times i. So these are the roots that we're going to be working with. So that gives us a y1, which is t to the negative one-fourth. I'm gonna separate them out, I'm gonna, uh, the real part and the imaginary part. I'm gonna write it as t to the negative one-fourth times t to the square root of 39 over four times i. And my y2 is also t to the negative one-fourth times t to the root, or negative root 39 over four times i. So these, are the two solutions y1 and y2. So our final solution is c1y1 plus c2y2. But we're not going to stop there because we want to express our solution in real terms. And we want to get rid of this i. So how do we do that? How did we do it last time? We did it with Euler's formula. So Euler's formula is e to the i times some theta is equal to cosine theta plus i times sine theta. So we want to use this identity to transform these guys into real solutions. And we're going to do it the same way that we did the constant coefficient case. But we don't have an exponential, so we have to do something a little clever. We've got to be a little clever here. What we're going to do is let's forget about this real part, this t to the negative 1 fourth part, because that's fine. That's not giving us any trouble. These guys are giving us the trouble. So let's deal with those guys. OK, so I want to take t to the root 39 over 4 times i, and I want to rewrite it using Euler's formula. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm actually going to introduce an exponential. Recall that e to the natural log, that, that just cancels out. So if I do e to the natural log of t to the power of 39 over 4 times i, then these are equivalent because the e and natural log will cancel out, leaving just a t to the power of root 39 over 4i. So I still don't have it in this, this exponential form yet, but I can take advantage of the properties of logarithms and rewrite it as e to the root 39 over 4i times the natural log of t. The reason why I can do that is because with logarithms, if my argument has a, if it's raised to some power, I can take that power and move it down in front of it. So now let me rewrite it like this, e to the i times root 39 over 4 natural log of t. So now I have e to the i times theta 
where this is my theta. So I can finally rewrite this as cosine of root 39 over 4 natural log of t plus sine of root 39 over 4 natural log of t. So all this is in the argument of cosine and all of this is in the argument of sine. So this guy is equal to this guy. We were able to expand it using Euler's formula. So really I can write y1 as t to the negative one fourth. We can't forget that real part. That's really important. Don't forget these guys right here. That's a uh, common mistake that I've seen. So uh, we have t to the negative one fourth times our expanded part with the cosine sine. So cosine of root 39 over four natural log of t i times sine of root 39 over 4 natural log of t. And then we can do the same thing with y2. It's really nothing different. The only thing different is that we have the negative root 39 over 4 that we are dealing with. Uh, but again, we have that real part tacked on. Don't forget that. t to the negative 1 fourth. And same idea with the Euler's formula. We get the same thing except for since uh, we have that negative root 39 over 4, the negative sign um, produces a negative right here. And you can verify that on your own, or you can watch the video of the constant coefficient case. I think I show that, of why that, why that happens. It's just, it has to do with the even, uh, the even and odd nature of cosine and sine, and then also with this negative right here. Anyway, these, are our two linearly independent solutions. But we see that we still have an imaginary. We still have this i right here. We want to get rid of that. OK, so our next goal is to express this purely in real terms. So let's take advantage of linear combinations of our solutions. So we know that y1 and y2 are solutions to this equation, because we just derived them. They are solutions. But we also know that y1 plus y2 over 2 is also a solution because they are just linear combinations. Any linear combination of solutions is also a solution. So y1 plus y2 over 2, which is a linear combination, must also be a solution. So y1 plus y2 over 2 is equal to t to the negative 1 fourth. I'm just going to go ahead and factor that out because it's common on both of them. And if I add these guys together, the terms with the i signs, they cancel out, leaving a 2 cosine root 39 over 4 natural log of t, but I also divide by 2. So this gives me cosine of root 39 over 4 natural log of t. And again, all that is in the argument of cosine. So that is what y1 plus y2 over 2 equals, and you can verify that yourself if you don't trust me. But anyway, we also have y1 minus y2 over 2 times i, another linear combination of these guys. And again, because y1 and y2 are solutions, this linear combination of y1 and y2 also must be a solution. And the cool thing is that this also comes out as a completely real solution like this guy did. And that's the whole reason why we pick this setup right here. So what this ends up coming out to be is t to the negative 1 fourth times sine of root 39 over 4 natural log of t. So really what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to take these guys as my two solutions. These linear combinations of the complex solutions that we have uh, ended up giving us real solutions, which is what we wanted. So we can just use these to express our final solution. And again, this is just the same thing that we did for the constant coefficient case. If I go in a little more in detail on that one, I believe in my previous video. So you can always revisit that one. But uh, so yeah, we just our final answer is going to be C1. I'll just call it, I'll call it YA and then C2, YB, where this is YA and this is YB. So when I rewrite this out, I'm actually going to factor out this T to the negative one fourth first. So again, don't forget this guy, very important t to the negative 1 fourth times c1 cosine of 
root 39 over 4 natural log of t plus c2 sine of root 39 over 4 natural log of t. All right, so this is our answer, and we managed to express it all in real terms. So again, it's really not necessary to go through all this stuff and, and then take the linear combinations. You don't really have to go through all that steps. Really, you can kind of just jump straight into this real solution, just like we do in the constant coefficient case. So once you figure out, once you you find your roots and they're of this form right here, you can just pull this this b and then throw it in the cosine and the sine along with a natural log of t. But um, anyway, I just wanted to be complete when I showed you guys this. Um, hopefully that made sense. I know it was kind of a lot. The complex roots are definitely, I think, one of the harder cases. So if you guys want to see another example of this, just let me know and I'll make another video. But yeah, thanks for watching and see you guys later.